Great to be back with you all. Uh, today we have uh, another episode of our special guest, Steve Campbell, the Brain Whisperer. Hi, Steve. How Hello. are you? Good. How are you? Steve, it's great to see you again. Um, Thank you. you. You know, in our sessions, we talk about how uh, we can control our brain. We often don't, but we can and we should. Um, and and it's interesting because sometimes we're our own worst enemies. We yeah. we mm. create problems yeah. for ourselves. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's really part of our brain, isn't it? It's yeah. it's part yeah. of what the it brain is. whisperer tries to teach us. Yes. How, yeah. how to avoid that. Yeah. 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 The, there's a wonderful book written by Jim Collins from Stanford University that I used when I was teaching management at various universities. And the book is titled Good to Great. And what he did was he studied for many years the top companies in America. And he asked himself the question, what made them great? Because as I shared with you before, everything starts with how you think. Everything really starts up here. So in my in my presentations in my own book, I talk about affirmations and the fact that we can create proactively new affirmations, lock onto them, and then our brain locks onto them too. It gets rewired, and those new affirmations become a part of who we are. But my experience with people who have done this over the last thirty years is that oftentimes the affirmations don't work, even though they're doing everything right and they come back to me and they say i don't understand why why aren't they working and i work with them and we get them changed but i want to share with you some principles that talk about why we get in our own way and how we can avoid ourselves doing that and it's based on the book by dr jim collins good to great number one if you want to write this down, you can. There is a conflict in your brain. In all of our brains. I wish there wasn't. I wish we could take a pill. I wish we didn't have to deal with this, but we all do. Why? Because let's face it, and I don't think you would disagree with this, we live in a broken world. And we are a broken people. And I don't care how healthy you are and how much psychology you've had and how much therapy you've had and all this sort of stuff. Even all of us shoot ourselves in the foot. There's a wonderful book, which is printed in, 19, in the 1980s called What You Say When You Talk to Yourself by Dr. Shad Helmstetters, who's still traveling around speaking. And what he discovered is that 75 to 80 percent of what we say to ourselves is what I what I call he doesn't call this, but I call it negative crap. So we give ourselves really, really negative, negative messages. So what I want to talk about that is, first of all, the evidence for this and that what we can do about it. And this is based on good to great. OK, so some interesting studies uh, Forbes magazine every year they pick the top companies so one year it was google another year it was was dell um another year it was uh, nasdaq and it's interesting after they pick these companies immediately after they have been picked more than half of them decline and some of them actually go bankrupt of the 1955 Fortune 500 companies, 70% are now out of business. So it's something that we all do. We, we, we really do shoot ourselves in the foot. So what can we do with this? Well, here's what Dr. Collins discovered. He looked at companies that went from good to great, such as Abbott, Walgreens, Kimberly Clark, okay? And he asked himself what made them great. And here's what he discovered, which was really surprising. Number one, it was not the leadership that made them great. Number two, it was not the executive compensation, how much money people were making. 
It wasn't technology. It wasn't mergers and acquisitions. It was not even in motivating people. What made them great was that at the very top, starting down, starting going on down, greatness was a matter of conscious choice. They chose to see themselves as great no matter what happened. They locked onto that. There's a wonderful principle that I share in my seminars called running into the rock. I talk about how my father taught me how to ride a bicycle. Took me out to this road, took the train, was off. He said, now, Steve, before I give you a little shove, and don't worry, honey, I'll be walk, running next to you. You see that rock on the road about 50 feet? Yes, Daddy. Don't run into that rock. And I got down on my bike, eyes locked onto the rock so I would really impress my dad. Pending like mad, you already know what happened. Bam! Right into the rock. That is a wonderful, wonderful principle of our brain. Our brain locks onto what we deem as important. So what have we learned about this? It's what I call pushing the flywheel. And this again comes from Jim Collins' book. He talks about a flywheel on the ground. And a manager picks up, doesn't pick it up, but he puts it on so he can roll it, and he begins pushing on it. At first, it is really hard but he begins pushing some more and some more and some more. And over time, it gets easier and easier until eventually the flywheel is hard to stop. It's a matter of locking on and pushing it. Now, here's a couple of principles. Ready? And we've seen this in COVID. The shortest distances, or the shortest distance between two curves, I'm sorry, let's go back. The shortest distance between two points is often a curve. Say that again. The shortest distances between two points is often the curve. Mary and I love to walk out in the country. And what fascinates us is as we look at the trees and the mountains and the, and the, oh, the, the waterfalls and everything, it is so, so beautiful. But there's not a straight line anywhere to be seen. It is all chaos and crazy. And yet it is so beautiful. That's how life is. Have you ever noticed this? Life is crazy. It never works out the way you thought it would. Let me share with you a story. I was teaching and I got a call from the largest computer publishing company in the world, Q Education and Training. And they said, we want you to teach, we want you to write a book for us, which blew me away. But they said, okay. And I said, okay. And I wrote the book. It was called Office 97 Complete. It was a book on how to how to um, integrate Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access, how to put an Excel spreadsheet into a Word document. I wrote the book. They loved it. They said, we're going to make 30,000 copies. Our first go around, we'll sell them to college students for 70 bucks, and you'll get $30 for every book, no, $20 for every book that we sold. So what's 20 times 30,000, $600,000? And that's just for the first go around. Every single time Microsoft Word has a new, Microsoft has, Microsoft Office has a new version, we'll have you write another book for us. So I said to Mary, we're set. There's our education. There's our daughter's education. There's our retirement. There's our vacations. We're set. So I wrote the book. They loved it. And then Q got purchased by Pearson Education. And Pearson never marketed my book, ever. I think we sold 18 in Australia. And that was it. But 
by that time in my life, when I was 50, I had learned that nothing in life is wasted unless you say it is. So I said to myself, I'm a published author. Wow. My wife is impressed. My mom's impressed. Four years later, our daughter announced she wanted to go to University of San Francisco for school, which was very exciting, but school USF is very, very expensive. But we got together on, as a family on a Sunday night, prayed about it, created some affirmations. I went to bed. I went to school the next morning where I was teaching for seven years, taking the same route. This time I noticed a sign on the freeway that said USF. I had never seen that sign before. It had always been there. Why did I see that sign this time? Because my brain was looking for it. That's how our brain works. When you lock onto something, when you lock onto that rock, the brain looks for that rock. So my brain looked for USF. To make a very, very long story short, I got an interview to teach for them. They said, you can't teach for us. You don't have a master's, you don't have a doctorate. Even though I brought my book, the two books that I had written. I said, thank you very much. I didn't hear from them for months. Then they called me and they said, we'd like you to teach this course in computer software. I said, but I don't have a master, I don't have a doctorate. Yes, Steve, but you're a published author. But my book never sold. We don't care. But because you wrote that book on software, we're going to hire you to be a professor here. And while you're teaching, you can get your master's at USF. And for every course that you teach, we'll credit you the units. And you can use that unit to pay for your master's. If my daughter goes to USF, can we do the same thing? Absolutely. So for the next 10 years, I taught at USF, Sacramento, San Francisco, all over Northern California. It paid for my daughter's education and it paid for my master's. I figured out at the end of those 10 years when I took in how much they paid me, which was outlandishly high, and how much tuition I did not have to pay, over 10 years, I made $145,000 on a book that never sold. What's the point? The point is the shortest distance is oftentimes a curve. Life gets crazy. Number two, it is what we do with the unexpected that really counts. I can guarantee you that tomorrow will be different from today. I know that there will be no similarity between today and tomorrow. It's what we do with the unexpected that counts. So what can we do with this in the pandemic? Realize this, that you're not perfect. Your brain isn't perfect. There's battles that you have with yourself. But this is 74 years of walking around in this body, 40 of which I hated myself. I hated my brain. I hated being bald. I hated what I looked like. I hated being stupid. And it turns out that most of what I hated were absolutely untrue or it didn't even matter. When I met Mary, I had a comb over. And my biggest fear was that when we got married, she would realize I was going bald. I laugh, I look at this. And my plan was to get up early in the morning and wash my hair and hair blow it dry. Now this is back in 1970 before they had hair blowers. And then get back in the bed and pretend I was asleep. The stupid things that we do. And finally, after being married for about three or four weeks, Mary said, oh, let me cut your hair and save us some money. I said, great. And she took the comb over and just whacked it off. 
<laughs> did you do? She said, honey, if you had hair, I wouldn't know who you are. <laughs> it's being bald that makes you so good looking. John, that's wonderful. Finally, we have an answer. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay. Look, can you see the point? The point was, I thought that my brain believed it. Hmm. Can you see how we get in our own way? So, what can we do with this? Albert Einstein had a wonderful, wonderful definition of insanity that I use in my classes all the time. He said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. Say that again. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. I'm going to encourage your listeners to look at what you have been saying to yourself. Just as I said, being bald is really ugly. Mary said, I love it. And it's interesting. As soon as she said that, I said, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. And what did my brain say? Okay. Was it true? I don't even care. All I care is what you tell me. You say it, I believe it. You lock on to it, you know what I will do? I'll do everything I can to make it true in your life. Wow. Mm. So the Positive mindset is really important. It really is. And what's so wonderful about your brain is your brain doesn't care whether what you're saying is true or not. All it cares about is what you tell it. Oliver Sacks is one of my heroes. And he wrote the man who, I'm sorry, the wife who thought she was something, something. But he was an amazing person. And he discovered how crazy we are with our thoughts. <laughs> and our brain absolutely believes them. Mm. Let me share with you another story that's so very true. I taught math at USF, and a student came to my office one day after the first day of class. She said, Mr. Campbell, I'm really glad you're my professor because I'm a C student. I said, well, let's work on that. So I worked on that. She got an A in the first midterm. I gave her the test. She freaked out. She said, oh, Mr. Campbell, this is a mistake. I said, what do you mean, Sue? She said, I've never gotten above C in a math test. You must have made a mistake on this. I said, I really didn't, Sue. This is a genuine A. So then she looked at it longer. I'll never forget this. She, and she said, do you know what this means? And of course, now I'm getting excited. So I sat down next to her. I said, of course I do, but I want you to tell me what this means. This means, Mr. Campbell, that when I flunk my next test, I can still mean say my C. <laughs> I said, Sue, just get an A in every test. She said, oh, I can't. Why? Because I'm a C student. That's exactly what she did. She flunked the next test. You got to see in the course. So I sat down. I said, answer me this, Sue. What would happen if you had flunked this first test? Do you know what she said? Without a moment's hesitation, she said, easy. I was so like crazy to get an A on the next test. I said, Sue, just get an A on every test. She said, I can't. Why? Because I'm a C student. I'm bald. I'm stupid. This is the way I was raised. This is what I've done. These are my mistakes. This is where I failed. Or, or, or. Do you know when your old life ended? One second ago. So when did your new life begin? One second ago. Now do the math. 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day. In one 24-hour period, you have 86,400 opportunities for new life every single day. If you live to be 90, that means that you have 2,283,240,000 new opportunities for a new life every 
single lifetime. All you have to do is take them. And when you do, what does your brain say? Oh, okay. True? Don't care. All I care is what you tell me. Hmm. Uh, again, uh, uh, just just the amazing uh, change in attitude and what you tell yourself. And it's a message you deliver every single time, can't deliver it enough. Uh, is, uh, you know, for, for some people, they're going to find, yeah, that's the right example for me. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. I can make that change. So, yeah. again, thank you again. Uh, this time we were talking about navigating the uh, pandemic, but it doesn't matter what you navigate. You're navigating life. That's Getting right. out of your own way. Right. That's, that's right. That's, Getting that's, out of your own way. That, yeah. That's the most important thing, isn't it? So that's we right. can be our best. That's right. that's and that's right. why that's why you are the brain whisperer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.